slope point form. So this is all investigation. I think we should just start with what I already said. Okay, this is just old x and y. That stays there when you're writing the equation. When would you use this equation? Well, if you're looking at a graph and you can see or calculate what the slope is and you can see what the y-intercept is, you probably wouldn't use this. You would use slope y-intercept form. But what happens if you don't know what the y-intercept is? What if we give you the slope and the point, i.e., like that? It says write the equation of the line. Well, you would want to write it in this form. That would be the easiest way to do it. Okay? All you do is plug in the slope there and plug in the point here. And if you label your point, just like before, you're less likely to make a mistake. Because believe me, people put the x where the y goes, and they put the y where the x goes. Okay, Make a simple little mistake, lose an easy mark. Right? Okay, so where is it? Here it is right here. It's nice to see it as you're doing it. When you guys are doing this, you should have your formula sheet right beside you. You should look. Right? All we're doing is plugging in 3, where there's the slope, and we're plugging in the point x1, y1, where they have the coordinates. Okay? So state this equation in slope point form. I'm going to go y minus y1. What's y1? It's 5. Equals m, that's 3, bracket, x stays as it is, minus x1 is 6. Piece of cake. Okay, should be an easy mark. All right, so y minus, what's y1 here? It's always in the form x, y. That's negative 1. Okay? Equals m bracket x minus x1. Of course, if the answer is not going to look like that, is it? They're going to clean that up a bit. What's negative, negative 1? It's going to be plus 1, right? So their answer is going to look like this. That's the only part that kind of gets confusing. Okay? If I ask you, if I just give you this, and I say, what's the point on that line? You got to think, huh? It has to be in y minus y1 form. So that thing is not plus 1, <coughs> that's negative 1. Okay? That's how it needs to look. That's the tricky part. Okay? The point on this graph is 1 minus 1. We already know that because we just did this. Alright? That's the tricky part. You've got to remember, a negative negative means positive. Okay? Slope's a half. So what? y minus minus 8. Can I just write y plus 8? Okay? Because it's just like the last question, right? y minus minus 8 is going to be y plus 8 is m x minus minus 9. Okay? That's the equation of that line. That has a slope of a half and goes through that point. Okay? Determine the equation of this line in slope y-intercept form. Do you know what the y-intercept is? Looking at this, no, you don't. No, you don't. Nope. Stop arguing with me. Okay? No. But we could write it in this form and then maybe convert it. Sorry, no, we're going to convert it to this form. I got ahead of myself. We want to write it in this form first. Okay, then convert it to that form. Just a little bit of algebra. This is easy compared to doing that fraction stuff yesterday. Okay, so y minus, that's y1, the second coordinate, equals the slope x minus 
minus 5. Okay? That's the equation of the line. But I want that in slope y-intercept form. y equals mx <coughs> plus b. So we just got to solve this thing for y. All right? Get rid of the brackets. So first I'm going to write this as y minus 2 is minus 5x plus 5. Okay, Liam? Oh, you're right. Thank you. Yeah, slope is positive 5. Thanks. I guess I looked there. All right. That's better. All right. So how do I solve this thing for y? I got to get rid of the negative 2. I got to throw it over here. And I got to get rid of these brackets. Does it matter which one you do first? No. Okay. Let's get rid of the brackets. y minus 2 is... That's called distributive law, right? Five times everything there. 5x plus 25. Then get rid of the 2. So y is 5x plus 27. What's the slope? 5. I already knew that. But I didn't know the y-intercept. Now I do. It's 27. Okay? Now, could you have plotted this on graph paper. Just put that point. There's the slope and find this out. Yeah, but is your graph going to go up to 27? Probably not. Okay, that is a way to do it, but I mean that would take 10 minutes, right? And you'd be pulling your hair out before you're done. But it is possible. Okay, so let's do that again. If you're given the slope and a point, which equation do you want to use? slope point form of the equation, right? Okay, I got the point. y minus 4 is the slope minus 7, x minus the x point, minus 3. So that's x plus 3. <coughs> All right, I want to put that in slope y-intercept form. Maybe the question says, hey, what's the y-intercept of this line? I want to convert it to this. Say, let's add 4 this time first. Add 4 to both sides. Okay. Y is, and then I'll expand this out, negative 7x minus 21 plus 4. Okay. I don't know what the y-intercept is yet. I've got to collect those two numbers. So y is negative 7x minus 17. That would be another ugly one to graph. I mean, who's going to make their graph go down to negative 17, right? Not many people. Graph paper on the back of your formula sheet, by the way. A couple of you guys used it on that quiz. I'm, you can, you're allowed to. Um, I don't think it goes down to 17, right? I guess, did it? Does it have 17? I don't know. I don't want to count those. If you made your origin way up here, it might. But usually you put your origin in the middle. That goes, doesn't go down to 17, OK? So that would be the way to do that question. All right, this is a good question. There's a couple of ways to do it. I don't care which way you do it, okay? You could be John or you could be Nikki. Let's see what's going on. The question is, determine the equation in general form, unfortunately, of a line with a slope minus 2 passing through this point. So we've done something kind of like that, but the point I gave you before was probably which special point? The y-intercept. It would have had coordinate 0 minus 5. That's the y-intercept. This one's not. Okay? So let's do Nikki first, because this is what we're talking about. Okay, she's going to put it in that form, because you got the slope. You got a point, okay? Let's use slope point form. y minus y1 is m bracket x minus x1. Put in the slope. Put in the two points, okay? x is 3, y is minus 5. And we have y plus 5 is minus 2x plus 6. 
Okay. Okay with that, Colton? All right. What are we trying to do? We want to put this in general form. Okay. How do you do that again? Well, there's a number. There's a number. I'm going to want to collect those. Again, this a, this minus 2, needs to be positive. Okay. So let's put that over to this side of the equation. Change the sign. Keep the y there on the left side, plus y. Let's bring the plus 6 over to that side too. When I do that, I've got to change the sign. So minus 6. I still have plus 5 over there. Okay. What do I have left on the right-hand side if I move both of those terms to the left? Yeah. Okay. So just collect those two numbers. That's minus 1, and that's in general form. Just double check my book, make sure I didn't make a mistake. Okay, looks good. Okay, so that's one way to do it. John's way is just as good. Okay, he doesn't like this slope point form. Okay, he doesn't like to use it. He likes this one because that's the one we've done the most, and that's the same case for you too. Because that's the first one we got. Okay. Do you know the slope? Sure. So he put it in. Do you know the y-intercept? No. But you can find it. There is an equation. You can solve an equation if you only have one variable. What did John do? He knew that it goes through that point. Like if a line goes through this point, then that point's got to work in the equation of the line, right? It has to work. So this must work if you plug it in the equation. So he substituted 3 minus 5 in the equation. That must work, right? Because that's the equation of the line. That point's on the line, right? <clears throat> It's usually a tricky concept. Remember when, if we got a line like y is, I don't know, 4x plus 2, and you need to graph it, how do you do that? You pick some values of x, right? You put them in the equation, and you find the corresponding values of y. If x is minus 2, that's minus 8 plus 2 minus 6, right? So on and so on. Well, all these points got to work. That's how you make the line. You connect the points. So if this point's on the line, it's got to work when you plug it in. Okay? So substitute it in. Y is minus 5. There it is. X is 3. There it is. So minus 5 is minus 6 plus... Now this is tricky when you have B's and 6's in the same line. Make sure you're clear which one's which. Because they look the same. All right, what's B? Solve it for B. B is 1. That's the y-intercept. Okay? So if I put that back, I have y is minus 2x plus B. Y-intercept. And then I gotta solve that thing for general form. Okay? So add 2x to both sides. Okay, minus 1 to both sides. Let's write this one out. Okay? That's gone. That's gone. And do I get the same thing? Yes, I do. Okay, so that's two ways to do it. Which way do you like better? Your choice. If that's the question, it doesn't matter which way you guys do it, okay? Should I say this again, This what he did here? Okay. 
Well, try to remember that, guys. Um, okay, a couple more. This, there's a line. All right? So, determine the equation of the line in general form. All right. Remember, John, that question we just did? He likes doing it this way. Okay? So, let's find a slope. Let's find the y-intercept. Let's put it in general form. How do you find a slope? Find two nice points. There's one. Yeah, that one looks okay. Make a triangle. What's the rise? One, two, three. What's the run? One, two, three, four. Am I done? Is that correct? It's a negative line. Make sure you put a minus there. Let's put it down there. Okay, that's the slope. What's the y-intercept? Uh-oh. What's the y-intercept, Emily? It is some number. You're right. You can't assume that's four and a half. What if it's 4.49? What if it's four and three eighths? Negative. Okay. You don't know what this is. So you can't do this. Okay? Luckily we know another way to write the equation of a line. Right? If you know the slope and the point on the line, can you use slope point form to write the equation? Yes, Mr. Watson. Okay, so slope point form is y minus y1 is m times x minus x1. I know the slope. Plug it in. What point do you want to use? It doesn't matter. Which one's your favorite point, Leon? Pick your favorite point. Negative 2, negative 3. There's a point right there. Okay, doesn't matter which point, guys. It'll all work. So y minus negative 3 is the slope. Got a lot of minuses going on here x minus minus 2. That's the equation of this line. But we're not done. We've got to put that in general form. So y plus 3 is minus 3 quarters. x plus 2. Okay. Get rid of the brackets. y they don't give you enough room, is minus 3 quarters x, okay? Do you like to go minus 3 quarters plus 2? What are we going to have to do with this? Like to put it in general form, can we have fractions? i got to get rid of that 4. Now I can multiply that out, get rid of the brackets, and multiply it by 4 after multiplying this, or I could do that first, before the brackets. Which way do you think might be better? The second way. Okay, so before I do that, let's multiply everything by 4. Okay, now if it makes sense to you, for you to get rid of the brackets, fine. You can get the same answer that way too. Okay, so... Where am I going to write this? Over here. So I got 4 times y plus 4 times 3 equals 4 times negative 3 quarters times x plus 2. Now why don't I need to times that 4 by the x plus 2? Because it's all multiplied. There's no plus or minus there. Okay. If I got rid of those brackets, I would need to multiply the 4 by this term and that term. Okay. So I only need to do that once. But this way, 4 divided by 4, it's gone. I don't need to multiply fractions, 3 quarters times 2, and then multiply it. Maybe I'll do it again the second way, just to show you it's the same thing. 
Okay, so 4y plus 12 is minus 3 times x plus 2. Now I'm going to get rid of the brackets. Minus 3x minus 6. Okay. And if I get these over to that side, change the sign. That's pretty close to general form. I just need to do one more thing. 3x and 4y. And 18, add the 6 and the 12. Okay. Cool stuff, eh? All right, now, like I said, let's redo this. All right, some of you guys are thinking, well, eh, I want to multiply that out. Okay. So you can choose to just watch this or write it down. I mean, it's your choice, okay? So I'm going to multiply that out now, minus 3 quarters x minus 6 fourths, okay? Then how do I get rid of the 4? Multiply everything by 4, okay? So then I get 4y plus 12 equals 4 times negative 3 quarters x minus 4 times 6 fourths. Okay. Cancels. Cancels. And do I get the same thing? I don't know. Maybe you might like it that way better. I'm not sure. That's exactly what I got here. Okay. Either way, some people's brain works better this way, some people's brain works better that way, that's fine. Okay, but if you want to mark, that's what you got to do. Uh -huh. All right, let's get something easy now. What's the slope and what's the point on this line? Remember, it has to be in this form y minus y1 is mx minus x1, okay? So what's the slope? That's the easy one, 1 7. What's a point on the line? 4, what goes next, Tyrell? 11. Alicia? Shay? Sarah? Yeah, it's got to be minus 11, right? Because this has to be a minus here. If that's a plus, okay, y minus y1. y1 is negative 11, okay? All right. And that should be enough. Now you only got 24 minutes, but let's make a good dent in it. 